Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Historical Society of Harford County's Speaker Series. I'm Jackie Seneschal, your host. As many of you know, 2023 marks 250 years since the Maryland General Assembly carved Harford County from the eastern portion of Baltimore County. The Historical Society of Harford County is leading Harford 250, a collaboration of government, historic, and cultural groups that is organizing a year-long celebration to commemorate the event. The celebration officially begins in March of this year with the Harford 250 Showcase on March 31st and April 1st at the Harford Community College Arena on Thomas Run Road. To get us ready for that celebration, our guest today is Carol Dibel, a well-known local historian. In addition to authoring two books on Bel Air's history, Carol writes a regular monthly column on local history for Harford's Heart magazine. We are so pleased to have you with us, Carol. Harford County is celebrating its 250th anniversary this year, 2023. This presentation will give you a brief overview of the past 250 years in the county. Given our time limitations, I will only skim over major events, but hope these stories will entice viewers to delve into the county's fascinating history in more detail on your own. To begin, we need to start in the 1630s, when England's King Charles, a friend of the Calvert family, granted Cecilius Calvert, the second Lord Baltimore, the colony of Maryland. This is a very early map of the colonies, showing Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. As you can see, the lines were not very distinct, and this caused major problems for centuries. But that's another story. To attract settlers, the Calverts initially offered settlers 2,000 acres if they brought five men to the colony. There were many takers, so this generous offer was soon downgraded. The colony was divided into several counties, and these new settlers were given land grants upon arrival. The interior lands were less accessible, so the majority of early land grants were along the coastlines. Harvard's earliest settlements were in Stockett Town, now known as Habitat Grace, and on Palmer's Island just off the coast. A treaty was negotiated with the Susquehannock tribe to defend the area against attacks by the Seneca Indians. The earliest settlements were primarily trading centers. As counties were established, many newly arriving settlers were directed to holdings along Bush and Gunpowder Rivers due to accessibility along the Susquehanna, Gunpowder, and Bush Rivers. The General Assembly established county seats in each of the counties to assure order and a form of governance. Originally, Harford County was part of Baltimore County, and the county seat was located in an area on the Bush River. The site is now inaccessible to the public as it is part of Aberdeen Proving Grounds. Travel was very restricted in the early days. Essentially, settlers traveled by water or along Indian trails. Route 7, or the Old Post Road, was the primary inland route at that time. In 1691, the port at Old Baltimore on Bush River had silted in badly, so the county seat was moved to an area known as Gunpowder. But Queen Anne, the British monarch at the time, angry that she wasn't consulted, demanded it be moved again in 1709. The next county seat was located at Joppa in 1709. This area became a thriving international port until silting and other factors led to its demise in 1768. The county seat moved yet again, this time to Baltimore on the Patapsco. Traveling to this new county seat proved extremely difficult, and local residents decided to petition the General Assembly to split Baltimore County yet again. Cecil County had already separated from Baltimore County in 1674. In 1773, the General Assembly approved the request 
naming the new county after Lord Baltimore's illegitimate son, Henry Harford. Although Henry was Lord Baltimore's heir, he could not inherit the title because of his illegitimacy. It was hoped that the county's name would help legitimize his claims to his inheritance. Timing worked against him as the county's approval came in 1773, just a short time before the Revolutionary War began. The General Assembly named the town of Bush as the county seat for Harford. This photo shows a gathering at the Bush Tavern, the place that served as a courthouse at that time. These 34 men gathered to write the Bush Declaration, a formal document predating the Declaration of Independence. Recognizing that the Declaration could be seen as treasonous, they noted that they signed this at the risk of our lives and fortunes. The Declaration sent to the British expressed support for fellow colonists in Massachusetts and frustration at the Crown's disregard for the colonists. Soon the Revolutionary War became a reality. Local men were called up to be part of the militia fighting the British. France, also at war with Britain, sent troops and funding to assist the revolutionaries. Maryland, one of the original 13 colonies, was situated in the center of the country at the time, so it became a crucial point for troops and dignitaries during the war. This picture is a rendition of General Lafayette at Yorktown. His troops camped at the Rigby Farm in northern Harford County on the way to the Battle of Yorktown, and those of General Rochambeau camped at a site off of Route 7 near Bush. After the war, some of the French troops returned to Harford County, declaring it one of the most beautiful places in the country. A few of their homes still stand. The battles with the British were not over. In 1813, the British returned to Havre de Grace to attack and burn the town. Local troops, furious over this attack, joined in the fight to save Baltimore, which led to the final resolution of conflicts with the British. In 1822, Junius Booth purchased property on the outskirts of Bel Air. Booth was considered the premier Shakespearean actor in America at the time and found great solace on his farm property, where he and his common law wife, Marianne, raised their 10 children. This house, Tudor Hall, was built late in his life, and he did not live to see it completed. Booth's story is fascinating. His son, Edwin, went on to exceed his father's reputation as an outstanding Shakespearean actor. His son, John Wilkes Booth, is remembered as the infamous assassin of President Abraham Lincoln. Numerous books have been written about this family and their outsized impact on United States history. In the 1860s, the Civil War tore the country apart. In Harford County, the 12th Pennsylvania Regiment occupied Bel Air for a day, arresting rebel sympathizers. Although the county did not experience any actual battles during the war, bridges were burned on the Susquehanna River and at Magnolia. The county was split evenly between Union and Confederate sympathizers. Maryland's governor during the Civil War, Augustus Bradford, was born in Bel Air. He was a Union sympathizer, although he did own slaves. There were many free blacks in the county at the time, as well as numerous slaves. Slave sales were held on the county courthouse steps until 1863. Union officers recruited both free and enslaved black residents to join the fight. This picture is a photo of a mural on the American Legion building on Bond Street in Bel Air, telling the story of Alfred B. Hilton a black color bearer who won the Medal of Honor for his bravery at the Battle of Chapin Hill in Virginia in 1864. Major Harry Gilmore led Confederate troops into the area near Jerusalem Mill and Magnolia in 1864. He had grown up near this area and led Confederate troops primarily from this part of Northern Maryland. The raid was intended to act as a diversion while General Jubal Early moved in to free Confederate prisoners at Point Lookout. 
While the troops caused some damage, the mission was uns unsuccessful. After the Civil War, the Freedmen's Bureau was established to provide food, housing, medical assistance, establish schools, and offer legal assistance. The Hosanna School in Darlington is one of the schools founded under this agency. Around this same time, technological discoveries were beginning to expand. One of the most significant for Harford was canning technology. George Baker is recognized for starting the canning boom in Harford County. At its heyday, there were more than 180 canneries in the county. The boom lasted from the mid 1800s to 1917, when the combination of several bad drought years and the loss of prime agricultural land to Aberdeen Proving Ground and Edgewood Arsenal dealt a major blow to the industry. The three major rail lines in the county helped build the canning industry. The Baltimore and Ohio in Aberdeen was the major shipping engine for the eastern canneries, and the Mile Paw Railroad opened up the industry to farmers in the western part of the county. This photo shows the Mile Paw, sometimes referred to as the Milky Way, because of the huge quantities of dairy products it transported from Harford County to points south in Baltimore. By the 1890s, new technology was opening the county up to the modern age. The first telephone exchange was developed by J. Alexis Shriver. Small phone exchanges followed. Soon the towns would have phone service, electric service, and city water. It would be many years before these modern inventions would make it to outlying parts of the county. In 1917, President Wilson ordered the condemnation of 35,000 acres of upland and 34,000 acres of swamp and tidal lands for the purpose of developing the military bases known as Aberdeen Proving Ground and Edgewood Arsenal. This significantly changed life in Harford County. The land previously used primarily for farming, hunting, and fishing became military preserves. Tourists who once spent time at hunting lodges along the coast disappeared, and workmen from all over the country descended on the county to build a facility that would help train soldiers and test munitions as the country entered into World War I. This in-migration came to be known as the Down Yonder Migration, as numerous families moved to Harford from the South. Originally, they came for the construction jobs, but later, realizing the abundance of reasonably priced land and job opportunities in the area, many more followed. By 1929, the demand for electricity was expanding, and the Susquehanna was seen as the logical place to build a hydroelectric dam to meet Philadelphia's needs. Thousands of people were brought in to work on the dam which still serves the community today. By the mid-1930s, Nazi plans were frightening many in Europe and America. The Bacha family owned a huge shoe conglomerate in Czechoslovakia and could see that all they had built was in jeopardy. They began searching elsewhere for property to build a company town. One of the locations they found was in Harford County overlooking the Bush River at Sophia's Dairy. Working with local government representatives, they made plans to bring workers here from Czechoslovakia. But when the workers landed in New York, they were denied entry. After much negotiation, some were allowed to come to Beta, where a hotel, housing, company stores, and a shoe manufacturing factory were built. But others were sent on to Canada and South America where the immigrants were welcomed. The Beta Company went on to provide boots for combatants through several wars. They also sold the Beta Bullet tennis shoe and were the largest employer in Harford County for more than 20 years. Today, the site is redeveloped as the Riverside Community and Water's Edge Business Park. 
By the end of World War II, growth in the county from APG, Edgewood Arsenal, and various businesses, combined with post-war baby boom, resulted in some major changes. Schools were needed to meet the increasing number of children. Housing was in short supply. Infrastructure was woefully inadequate. Beller High School was built in the 1950s to address this changing demographic. More changes were soon to come. In the 1960s, there was a push to build housing in Harford as more people decided to move away from the cities and into suburban settings. With the development of Route 40 as the first four-lane road and the increasing number of families with two cars, suburban life was opening up. This led to the development of Chapatown, one of the first planned communities in Maryland, predating Columbia. The new community would be all-inclusive with a wide range of housing options, along with shopping, schools, churches, recreation, all were located within the community. The development brought in new residents, but never reached its full potential. By the 1970s, many county residents recognized that changes were needed. Harford was no longer a rural enclave. Water and sewer services were in desperate need of updates. Development was out of control and the county needed to move ahead to charter government. This led to a change to county executive council form of government, a master plan that delineated an area for urban growth and an area for rural and agricultural preserves. New water and sewer projects, road improvements, school development became governed by the development envelope concept with new developments focused along the Route 24 and I-95 corridors, as shown here in the yellow and purple. Much of Harford today is suburban, part of the megalopolis that reaches along the I-95 corridor, yet a large part of the county remains rural, thanks to the preservation plan set in place in the 1970s. We have only been able to touch on some of the significant developments in the county's history. Each of these topics deserves much more in-depth discussion, but we hope this overview leads you to explore the amazing history of this place we call home. Today, Harford's three municipalities are thriving centers offering meeting places and services for county residents. While much has changed, the community remains a great place to live, work, and play. Carol, thank you again for this quick overview of the long and intriguing history of Harford County. If you've enjoyed this presentation, please click, click the like button and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get notified whenever we post new videos. And if you, our listeners, are interested in the rest of the stories about Harford County history, I encourage you to become a member of the Historical Society of Harford County. You can find additional details specifically on Bel Air's history in Carol's two books, Bel Air Chronicles and Legendary Locals of Bel Air. The Historical Society has published hundreds of bulletins based on research into numerous facets of Harford County's history, Two of those, Toward the Writing of a New County History and Random Recollections and Anecdotes by an Old Official, might be a good place to start and learn more about our local history. And finally, please join us at one or all of the Society's upcoming events. On March 15th, Mary Schweers and the Genealogical Society will present Occupation and Crafts of Our Ancestors, at the Historical Society of, Head, of Harvard County's headquarters at 143 North Main Street in Bel Air. On March 31st, you can have <clears throat> be part of an exclusive adults only first look at the displays by almost 50 local arts, cultural and service groups as part of the Harford Showcase. On April 1st, the fun continues with the Family Fun Day 
that includes both indoor and outdoor displays. And finally, on April the 11th, we will share a new speaker series video that highlights Aberdeen Proving Grounds' historic role in the development of computers. Please join us again.